Chapter 45 The Taking Back the Cookies rally begins at 7.30 on Wednesday evening. The trouble starts at 8 when Warble finally takes the stage after making the audience wait half an hour while the sound system plays songs he hopes will fire them up into a state of reactionary frenzy. This land is your land. Thank God I'm a country boy. A boy named Sue. Harper Valley PTA. Attitude Adjustment. Eve of Destruction, and The Muppet Song. The music abruptly stops. The lights dim and then go out completely. After a few seconds, a spotlight searches high and low, but searches in vain. Finally, the opening strains of Another One Bites the Dust are heard. The spotlight focuses on center stage, and Warble comes bounding out, decked out in a farmer's coveralls and straw hat. He heaves a tambourine high in the air and steps to the podium, which is now bathed in a bluish-green light. He deftly catches the tambourine behind his back nonchalantly, as if it's an afterthought, and begins his speech. First, he relates stories about his grandmother and her almost incomprehensibly awesome cinnamon rolls. Then he tells of his mother and the pies she would make. Melt in your mouth, that's not the half of it. He tells of cookies, shortbreads, donuts, and fudge, describing the appearance, aroma, and taste of these near-sacred delicacies that were produced with love, sugar, spices, and a few other natural ingredients. The audience is enthralled. They feel it. They know what Warble is talking about. He has struck a common chord with those in attendance. Then, with a sneer, Warble rips the tambourine apart and yanks out a package of the home-style cookies. Holding the cookies up as David held aloft the severed head of the defeated Philistine giant Goliath, Warble relates his tale of deception and subterfuge in the supermarket. Working as followers, for this by now they can rightly be called, as outraged as they are over the mere existence of this item under this name, to a fever pitch, Warble yells out in his best righteous indignation voice, We're mad as Dallas and we're not going to take it anymore! The home-style cookies must go. These huge mega-corporations only understand one language, money. There is only one thing that will make them stand up and take notice. A blow to the pocketbook. For this reason, friends, I, Orble Pound Cake McGorkle I, invite you to be a participant in this great uprising against the hucksters of this world. Those with the audacity to claim that these chemical-filled briquettes are the equal of what your mother and my mother baked. The crowd roars its enthusiasm. They want blood. If the executive who had made the decision to name the cookies of interest homestyle were in their midst, it would go bad for him to say the least. The audience would doubtless rip him to shreds and feed him to the grizzly bears in Glacier Park. Yes, friends and neighbors, Warble continues, you can be a part of this historic event by contributing to defray the expenses of this lawsuit, which, because it will be brought against such a huge and deep pockets company, will indubitably be very expensive. Please, friends, fellow sons and daughters of mothers, reach into your wallets, reach into your pockets, and fork over, I mean, give from the bottom of your heart and the depths of your soul however much you feel home and hearth and mother are worth. If your mother is only worth $20 to you, give that. If she is only worth $50, contribute that. If your mother, friends and neighbors, is only worth $100 to you, after all the time she changed your diapers and cleaned up after you, give that. If your mother, who gave birth to you and sacrificed for you, and probably still does, means more to you than that, much more, Sacrifice that. Collection plates have been placed conveniently throughout the auditorium. Please, friends, give until it hurts. Only then can we hit the home-style phonies where it hurts them. As I know, that is what all of you would want, and it would take too long and delay our cause unnecessarily to keep track of how much each of you give, instead of distributing the money amongst all of us, my fellow sufferers of false advertisement, I will immediately contribute all the proceeds from this lawsuit to charity. On saying that, Warble hopes that Mary remembered to change her name. Oh well, it's the thought that counts. Even if she didn't do it, I'll proceed as if she had, and nobody will know the difference. 
As his coup d'etat, Warble pulls out a book and holds it up for the audience to see. The book is several hundred pages in length, but all the pages are blank, of course, no one in the audience knows that. Pausing to arouse anticipation, Warble finally bellows out triumphantly, Eat your heart out, Ralph Nader! I have written a scathing denunciation of the phony food industry named Unwholesome in Any Quantity, as those of you in the front row can see, and those of you in some of the other rows who are blessed with very good eyesight, no doubt as a result of genuine home cooking, including fresh cookies galore. Cheering wildly and fired up with enthusiasm, the crowds head for the exits, emptying their wallets of all their cash.